uh, I'm the guy behind bands like Zappa.com, uh, which is a music discovery podcast and blog, and now a video cast. On the side, I feature interviews with up-and-coming artists who uh, are working in the tradition of the great guitar god and composer Frank Zappa. So, uh, if you like that guy as I do, chances are you're gonna like the artists I feature. <laughs> summer and welcome back to bandslikezappa.com this is the second podcast at the site um, you can connect with me over at my own website bensummer.com uh, just enter your email address there in the box and you'll get three free downloads of my own music so please uh, take my music today I'm super psyched to feature Keith Horn Keith is a musician living out in, out in LA uh, he writes commercial music by day for you know, reality shows and commercials, and by night he is composing some of the uh, the craziest uh, uh, progressive rock, uh, jazz music uh, that I've come, come across in a long time. He's also a monster player on several instruments. He's got chops to burn, uh, and he's you know, just a smart guy and a great interview. Um, we talk about uh, the culture, the uh, his day job. Uh, we talk some uh, very serious uh, shop about uh, polyrhythms and metric modulation, all sorts of stuff uh, that'll probably put you to sleep if you're not uh, trained as a musician. But anyway, enough uh, enough of that. Without further ado, here's my interview with Keith Horn. Uh, hi, this is Ben Summer. I'm with bands like Zappa.com uh, on the Maiden Voyage here with Keith Horn. Uh, <clears throat> hey, uh, so Keith is a composer and a songwriter uh, out of L.A. And the story is <clears throat> I've been running this podcast and uh, blog at bandslikerush.com for uh, almost a year, a little over a year. And it had been meaning for ever since the get-go to start up its sister site, Bands Like Zappa, basically my two favorite kind of uh, um, musical vices. Yeah. And a folk and a feature kind of uh, <clears throat> you know like minded artists, and so I found Keith um, this website called Django, which is I don't know how they describe it. It's basically kind of like a Pandora, but for um, uh, for people you know fans of new you know, undiscovered music to go and uh, plug in their favorite artists, and then uh, every every dozen or so tunes that come through, a brand new usually unknown person comes out. Um, they, they, uh, basically, uh, these artists sign up in the database. Um, I forget what I was trolling for, probably Steely Dan or, or Frank Zappa. Yeah. And you came up, <clears throat> this was months and months ago, really. I heard the song Chicken Little and I was blown away. I was like, wow, this is, this is, uh, striking stuff. Well, <laughs> very well produced and, ah. uh, and, and, you know, uh, original sound. And Keith, I must chastise you. I tried very hard initially probably spent uh you know half an hour at one time trying to find you locate you contact you months ago and i gave up oh <laughs> and so, so i'm so sorry the only thing that was out there were a few of the songs i didn't have a website up yet i barely had a myspace or myspace was kind of on its way out at the time so i was ignoring it and uh i just last week finally put up my my facebook band page so i i was hard to find you were i remember look i looked at the myspace that seemed to be all i all i could find was the uh, keith horn uh, for that in the LinkedIn profile, um, but anyway, so I took another my, shot. My just apologies for my invisibility, but that was all right. Yeah. <laughs> I've re I've remedied it now. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. So you're still on Django, and um, mm -hmm. it looks like you're you're getting set to uh, was getting. It looks like you have or you're going to release your first album. Was Django just a test run of the same material you're uh, releasing now, or is it new? That you're working on. 
Yeah, it's the same stuff. Uh, Django, I've put up, I think, four or five out of eight songs that are on this first album called Rock Scissors. And I'm just finishing it now. Um, actually, just 10 minutes ago, I was just listening to the final mixes my engineer sent me today yeah. for to send off to CD Baby and to uh, to upload for to TuneCore so I can get up on iTunes and, and Rhapsody and whatnot. Cool, cool. Yeah. Why don't you explain uh, the way I usually run the podcast? I'll, I'll, uh, I usually insert two tracks uh, of my liking. Um, so the, the, the listeners will be hearing this before uh, probably you speak. But why don't you just kind of give a synopsis of where you think your music is at, your inspiration, and a little bit of background about your uh, life. Seems like you have a, an interesting background in music from what I read. Well, my my background is kind of uh, trial and error on a lot of different types of instruments over the years. Uh, when I was a kid, I about nine or ten, I started plunking out on the piano, and then I saw Back to the Future, and, and that final scene made me want to play guitar when I was nine years old. The so, Chuck uh, Berry scene? Or the Chuck Berry scene, which is to this day just this classic scene. <laughs> and, and I just loved it at nine, and I said, man, i got to do that. That's great. So I started playing guitar and uh, at home, and I started learning saxophone in school. So I was learning at school how to read music, and I was just messing around learning by ear at home on just the, the family keyboard and and uh, my guitar, right. kept pursuing guitar, kept practicing, got really good at it, and then found out that I couldn't make a living playing guitar when I was about 18. So I, I started. I went into college at Western Michigan University and uh, studied percussion. I, I, wait, wait, back up. How, how come you uh, concluded you couldn't make a living on the axe? Well, I, I thought about going into jazz guitar. No. And, um, That's your problem. I, when I got there, I realized how difficult it really was. They put giant steps in front of me. And I said, "That's it for me." All yeah, right. <laughs> so I, I and I thought I understood jazz, but I, I didn't want to spend all of my time studying jazz, which is what I probably would have had to do if I wanted to master it. So I, I decided to study percussion, and eventually that became composition, because I figured out I couldn't make it as a living as a marimba soloist <laughs> well you picked the two dumbest uh well jazz guitar ain't dumb that's where my background is but oh yeah it's it's night it's a nightmare skill you gotta hone and then at the end of the tunnel is a a, a non-career path is what a session musician <laughs> yeah i mean it's, it's better going on american idol and shooting I mean, stars there you know i mean it can lead to amazing musicality it's just for me, I didn't, I didn't see a, a future and, and sustenance coming from it. So uh, I was constantly trying to find something that would actually pay the bills. Right. So um, it led to composition. So I became uh, a composer in college and um, got a composition degree at Western, took a year off, went down to North Carolina and studied film scoring down there. Um, North Carolina School of the Arts, studied with a guy, a film composer named Dave McHugh, a um, great composer from the from the 80s and, and early 90s he did a lot of a lot of things and studied film scoring down there and so i had two degrees and not a job in 2002 so i moved to chicago to uh start scoring commercials oh, wow. and and um did that for a few years now that what made to, you what hold on what made you yeah. you started jazz guitar and then classical percussion okay mm -hmm. i can see you know you could take those skills and turn them if you want to if you want to go in a, a commercial angle, there's plenty of avenues where you could make a, a good living doing um, interesting work, you know, interesting work. And then you go into compo com composition. How come you went straight into commercial music? Was it just that at that point? I mean, you know what I'm, you see where I'm going at? Like yeah, composition, uh, is composition can be just as dead end and, uh, and technically intensive, but, you know, uh, poor on the job prospect side as jazz guitar or classical percussion. Right, I kept I kept seeing the the job dead ends at the end of everything I was doing that I was loving doing, but if I didn't see any job with it, I I didn't want to do it anymore because I wanted to do it for a living, and uh, eventually I uh, I decided to do the film scoring thing because it it just there's there's work there, so I ended up going to Chicago and doing uh, in commercials. There's there's really not a lot of film work or TV work in Chicago. That's as a composer. If you want to make your bread and butter in Chicago, commercials are pretty much where it's at. And that eventually just led to um, a job in, in, out here in L.A. doing uh, writing for uh, a reality TV composer. And I do a lot of work. That's kind of my bread and butter. I do a lot of library work. I mean, it's two, three minutes a day for the last five years. And that really has honed my, my chops, my production chops. Oh. So all of these things taken taken into account. In the meantime, I was I, I fell in love with Frank Zappa in the '90s, and in the meantime, I had been listening and studying Zappa and 
playing a lot of it in college and, and just always loved it so much. And it became inescapable when I started, really started writing music. His work became just kind of inescapable. That having said that, when you write commercials and, and reality TV music, nobody wants to hear anything like Frank Zappa. So how do you uh, scratch the itch, if you will? I write, I, I write an album's worth of stuff, and this is it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that that's an interesting story. So, um, huh? So you're you're still playing guitar, right? Uh, that's yeah. What, that's you. I hear all over the tracks. I presume. Yes. So it's some pretty some pretty decent chops. You haven't given up. Uh, you know your your training. Are you playing? Uh, I haven't looked at the detailed. Uh, you know. Whoa! Pardon me. I have some <laughs> some falling objects in my house. Um, what else are you playing? Anything? Uh. Instrumentally, yeah, on the on the album, uh, it's all me. Um, it's everything is samples except for obviously the vocals, the guitars, the bass, and um, the the track "Film at 11. I don't know if you've heard that yet. It's the uh, it's the third track on the CD. Uh, a friend of mine is a friend of Chad Wackerman, uh, the great Zap, Zappa drummer, and so Chad, I tracked Chad at his place on "Film at 11. and, he, and it's all. It's all metric modulations, and, and there's, there's, a, there's a challenging 11-16 section in the back, and I thought, man, it was just serendipitous that as I was finishing that tune, my, a friend of mine said, hey, you know what, I know, I know uh, Wackerman, I should introduce you to him, and it, just, it was just a dream of a session, and it just worked out so well. Wow, so that's, uh, that's well, of course, I, I fell in love with Wackerman, uh, he's the guy who plays with Alan Holdsworth, right? Yeah. One of them, uh, so uh, he's just a, a sick old, you know, uh, lanky guy. Yeah, he's 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 a monster, and he's been. I mean, he was with Frank for eight, seven, eight years, I think. His his last drummer, his last full time drummer, from I want to say eighty one to the last eighty eight tours, he was there the whole time. And you know, he was just a kid when he got in, so he's he's just phenomenal. So yeah, that's uh, geez, these two two composing geeks uh, geeking out here. So you I dropped love it. you dropped a phrase that I. Uh, that is close to my heart, metric modulation. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and you wouldn't believe, I, you know, uh, about four or five podcasts back on bandslikerush.com, <clears throat> I interviewed this dude who was a, um, not, as, not as edumacated as you 